Did you know that 46% of all German nouns are feminine? That's almost half of all the German nouns. So today we will look at the endings of those words. And generally, I would not recommend categorizing German nouns when you just start learning the language because you do not have too many words and when you then start categorizing them, you end up with just a couple of words for each category and you might have many categories. That is one more thing you have to think about that's not really helping you at that point of your studies. But once you have a bit more of a Wortschatz, once you know more words, it does make sense, at least sometimes, to use categories. And for the feminine nouns, it absolutely makes sense because they are very steady. I specifically chose the feminine word endings that don't have a lot of exceptions, that are not merely tendencies, but either extremely strong tendencies or just the endings that always fall into that feminine category. And stick with me because I have some examples for you, words that are actually really, really useful. So I did not choose anything super abstract that you're never going to use. No, these are really good words that you can integrate in your vocabulary and use as soon as you get the chance. First up is the E ending for feminine nouns. And the unemphasized singular E in the end is a very good indicator for the word being feminine. There are a couple of exceptions, such as Name und Käse, which are both masculine, but many, many words that end in E are feminine, such as Tüte, Tasche, Tasse, Katze, Flasche, Socke, and so on. Also, most of our fruits end in E and are feminine. And even some of those that don't end in E are feminine. So we have Traube, Melone, Zitrone, Orange, but also Kiwi is actually feminine. So fruits are mostly feminine. Also a couple of exceptions such as der Apfel und der Pfirsich. Actually, I think all the other fruits are feminine. If you know a fruit that is not feminine, that is not Apfel and Pfirsich, let me know in the comments. One little thing you have to watch out for is that there is also a plural E version. So we have a group of plural nouns that end in E. Just watch out that you do not confuse those with the feminine nouns. And now let's have a look at some clearly feminine endings. Our first one is UNG, so words that end in UNG, such as Zeitung, the newspaper, Meinung, opinion, Haltung, attitude, and Einstellung, also attitude. Let's have a look at Haltung and Einstellung and the translation attitude. When you speak about an attitude that is more based on your opinion, then you call that Einstellung. Einstellung can also be a setting. So if you have settings on some program on your computer, those are called Einstellungen. Die Einstellungen, singular, die Einstellung. Haltung, on the other hand, when you translate it as attitude, means more of a positioning. Haltung. So it's similar to Einstellung when you speak about opinion, but Haltung is a bit more positioning and Einstellung is a little bit more opinion. Those are all feminine. Then the next ending that we're going to have a look at is Height. H-E-I-T. Height. Sicherheit. Security or safety. Gesundheit. Health. And also the opposite, Krankheit, sickness or illness, Gelassenheit, relaxedness. I don't think that's an English word. have to look that one up. Gelassenheit. The next category is feminine words that end in K. 
Zweisamkeit, Einsamkeit. That is solitude or loneliness. Aufmerksamkeit, Attention. Fähigkeit, that's a skill. Haltbarkeit. Haltbarkeit means that something lasts a certain time. So we use that with food. Foods usually have a Haltbarkeitsdatum. So that would be the date before it goes off. You usually have that printed on the label when you buy food. It's called Haltbarkeitsdatum. Haltbarkeit. And now feminine words that end in schafft. Eigenschaft. That's a feature or a characteristic. Gesellschaft. Society. Gemeinschaft. Community. Und Wissenschaft. Science. And then there are feminine words that end in ION. So that's JON but also often T-I-O-N, Zion. Watch out here with the pronunciation. When we have T-I-O-N, we don't actually say Tion, we say Zion. So it sounds like a T-S-I-O-N, Zion. For example, Situation, the situation. Motivation, motivation. And two without the T, Region, that's the region, and religion, religion. All four of them look exactly like the English version, so that's a bit easier to remember. Die Situation, die Motivation, die Region und die Religion. There are, of course, also the feminine words that are quite obvious, such as family members that are biologically also female. So the grammatical gender agrees with the biological gender, such as Mutter, Schwester, Tante. So that's mother, sister, aunt. And also all the professions that end in EN, in, in the end, that always implies a feminine or a female person who has that profession, so they all will naturally be feminine as well. But that is more of the obvious part and uh, the other ones with the endings, they are not so obvious if you don't know it. But those endings, as I said, you can really rely on when you see an ending like Heit, Kite, Schaft, Ung, Jon, then those will be feminine. And when you see the E in the end and it's not a plural, there's a super strong tendency for the word to be feminine. And as I said in the beginning, we have so many feminine nouns that this should make it a bit easier for you to keep studying German. I will see you in the next video. Wir sehen uns im nächsten Video. Bis dann. Tschüss.